Hi guys, I'm back. Um, I wanted to do a quick review on these travel watercolor brushes. Um, I wanted to invest in this because uh, I have been doing a lot of watercoloring and I do like it a lot and I do plan on doing this for the foreseeable future. So, um, I went on Amazon and all I typed in was travel watercolor brush and this was the first set kind of thing that looked like the Escoda travel watercolor brushes. Um, I was like the first or second option, I don't know. But I will provide a link for it in the description below. Um, it was $19 USD and something, some cents, I'm not sure. But um, yeah. Uh, I think I have Amazon Prime, so it's here in a couple days, really fast, and this is how it came. I was surprised that I got this with it. Um, I saw it in one of the pictures, but I thought that was just something you could carry it, and I didn't know it came with this. I didn't read much about it, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, so I got this. It came like this, and this was in its own separate little bag like that. So... You open this, and there they are. And I have to say, these are huge. I did not realize, like, this is the only, if you ask me, the only reasonable sized one. I did not realize how big these things are from the pictures. Um, it comes with... how big that one is. <laughs> it's just insane. It comes with a number 4, a number 8, and a number 12. Um, so, and, and these were in, in their own little tiny bags when they were in here. And um, I'm just going to leave that right there. They, it said that they're synthetic sable. I haven't done enough research and I'm not sure what that means. I figure it's either synthetic or it's sable what is there else um so hold on a second so this is the number 4 This is like a little wood thing. Whether it's real wood or fake wood, I have no idea. Um, but yeah. And then the brush head itself is pretty springy. And then it has the barrel here. Here, this is this is extremely comfortable. This number four. Um, I wish <laughs> that they had all of these like with just bigger brushes but just this this same number four size because this is perfect um, so yeah that's that one and they're pretty uh, snug on this pretty sturdy I think the big one was the one that kind of jiggled just a tiny bit but uh, yeah Just, just look at how thick this is. See if I could change my light a little bit. Yeah. This is how that looks like. Um, 
these are what cause that friction fit when you close it this way or when you close it this way. Okay. And then you have the number 12, which is It's just big. I did wet them a little bit, so that's why. It's a little bit. This is so thick, you guys. I can't I mean, you know what? Here, let me show you. This is a regular Sharpie that everyone knows what the size of is. Look at that. It's actually thicker than the Sharpie. I think, let me show, oh, that was long enough. <laughs> if you want to post the Sharpie, there you go. Up until this point, the Sharpie will fit in there nice and snug. So yeah. does have, does it? What is that? Hold on a second. I thought it had a little breather hole right there, but I think there's something in there. Let me see what I have here that I can try to see what's going on in there. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what the heck that was in there. Yeah, I don't know, but you can easily get it out. And, um, where? There. See? And now you have a little breather hole, which is fine. I wouldn't rely on that to keep your brushes dry. But if you have one of these, you can easily take whatever is in there out. That is so weird. What is that? It's like some dirt or clay. Huh. Let me see if these have that. Oh, no, this one's like totally open. Well, the breather hole seems to be a little bit bigger than the other one actually for the for the number eight. And this one is open too. Huh. So it's only the number number twelve that has this issue. Okay, well That is that. And let me give you guys the sizes. 
the dimensions. Um, I'm going to call this closed right here and then this posted. Okay. So. The squiggly line means about. This is not like an exact. Um, I just roughly measured. Okay. So, that being said, let's say you have this a little palette. Okay. This is a Jane Davenport um, watercolor palette that I got at Michael's for like 60 or 70 percent off. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a separate review on this, but this is what I've been using nonstop. I added some Grumbacher watercolor paints as well. Now. The number four I don't usually use. And this one I definitely hardly ever use. It, this came with another travel kit, but this is like the, the tiniest brush I've ever seen in my life. So I really never use that. I think it's real squirrel hair, this one though. Not sure, but because for such a tiny thing, it holds a lot of water. But this one, the number four, would very easily fit in here. I wonder if I, yeah, boom, I can just leave it on top. And so for, sorry, I use these paints a lot, they're always wet. Anyways, the number eight, uh, not really, like, it just, maybe if you kind of, hold on, let me see. You want it to hold it like this across on the top though but your paints would have to be pretty used up for that to end up being able to close so this uh, probably not now I'm assuming that you guys don't fill the middle freaking great I just had to refill this so it's all sticky So yeah, if you didn't have this middle portion filled up, then you can totally fit that one in there. You can fit this on just on top too, but you can fit this one in the middle easily if you just um, break it apart like that and it'll fit great in there and you'd be good to go. This one, I, I just don't see how, honestly, just this alone doesn't, maybe, but yeah, that's not going to close. It's just not going to close, and I have, some of my paints are like too sticking out, so 
yeah, I don't, otherwise that's the only other way I could see that happening. You'd probably have to do it this way. That's no, nope, no, there's no way. I'm sorry. There's just no way. I could see that happening. So this one is insane. Maybe keep this one like in your pocket. So this this way it's definitely not. There's just no way. So that's one of these. If you're, and this is like um, the same container that Primo watercolors come in, I do believe. There's, this is um, uh, about five inches. Yeah, it's about five inches. And. Almost three. It's like two and three fourths. So that's that. Now, if you like to carry this kind of thing around, this is a cheap, um, like twelve, thirteen dollar whiskey palette that I got on Amazon. All right. And there's my nice cracked gouache that I love so much. Um, so yeah, this, I could see it working out. Um, I wonder if you, let me see here. No. You could possibly get two in here if you didn't um, you know fill this area with paints as well which I see a lot of people do that because they like to have a lot of paints with them I found that if you go small you go small but if you go big you go big so usually there's like a, <laughs> a difficult situation trying to find out where you could put your um, your paints your brushes in and people usually carry them on the side, carried in something else. But yeah, the number eight open fits perfect. Obviously, the number four is going to. And then the number 12. The number 12 gets messed up on the tip there. I would not, I would not carry the number 12 open. So this is just so huge. I feel like, <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? The little pens that the Sailor Scouts had and they would go, Sailor Venus! And then transformation. <laughs> it just feels like this would be the size. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's that. Um, These are huge. Oh my goodness, these are huge. I don't really have, I have watercolor paper somewhere around here, but I'm moving so everything's all disorganized. I have my, um, I have my Stalogy. I guess we can mess around a little bit with this guy.
trying to try them out a little bit, and I'll say this. They act like a regular synthetic brush. And that's not surprising considering that they were $19 for the three of them and they're all made out of metal. They had to cut costs somewhere, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Let me see here. Use a color I don't use that often because some of them I'm gonna run out of. I use so much. Now for the point. That's really good. It's capable of some really fine lines. That's very good. Oh yeah, that's definitely a step up in how much water it holds from the number four, obviously. Okay, now, this also comes to a pretty fine point, so, let's see. that with the uh, with the other one. Let me do that real quick. Let's do 
that on print. the number 12. I kind of feel like I could get some thinner lines with the number 8 just because it came to a better point. The number 4 I felt like it had a tiny bit more of a rounded tip. Oh my god. I love this number 12. I'm not gonna lie. This thing is amazing. Oh, it's just so chunky. So chunky. Okay. Water is like flooding out of this sucker. Nope. And now we can get a bigger footprint than that. It's just. Floppy, that's why. Ooh. Yeah, this is also capable of some very thin lines. I know it's a round brush, but I'd go for just saying this is like a weird hybrid mop capabilities. But yeah. That's really oh this this one. You know what? I this one. <laughs> oh I love how this feels. I'm not gonna lie. It is big but it feels good in your hand. It feels amazing in your hand, I'm not gonna lie. It is just so nice and, and substantial. And sometimes I'll just like hold a brush from really far back and just kind of, you know, just to stay loose if I'm trying to do like a gesture drawing. So it just, it feels like my fingers have something to hang on to and my hands won't cramp up so much. You know what I mean? Because if it's smaller, your fingers are like fumbling, fumbling around trying to keep it in there and not let it slip out. But this, it's like, it's got something to, to really hang on to. You know what I mean? So yeah. Oh, I forgot the Yeah. This one moves around a little bit. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Oh, it's because it, oh, okay, so it needs to click on there. Otherwise, it's going to fiddle around. There. I feel like, you know what? You know the synthetic um, artist brushes you, for watercolor you can get at Michael's? I feel like this is just like those just in a portable barrel type mechanism. So that's all I got to say. Oh, look at that even wash. Oh, I like this. Yeah, these these are good. No, I like this. I like this. I'm going to mess around with them some more. And uh, 
these are what I'm going to use from now on because I, I didn't really have any super decent brushes up until now. This is a little bit like legit watercolor brushes. I was using some kind of weird other stuff. Oh, I had that weird, that little set, but that little set I'm scared to bring around with me because of um, it doesn't have a little protective casing on it. So, yeah, I'm really happy about these. There's that. I'll give you a close up of this here. So that's a size four. Size eight. And a size seven. Oh, I don't know if you can see. The writing is still like beaded water on there. <laughs> the the writing of the size twelve is just like. Oh, I don't think. But yeah, and then look at those thin lines. Isn't that crazy? It has a really good point on it. So, yep. Hope this was useful. Um, they're a lot bigger than I thought they were from the pictures. Um, this is pretty big. God, it feels like I could kill someone. It's just so... <laughs> oh, so, oh, no, I need, I need these to dry. Okay. Okie doke. Let's see here. There it is, guys. Um, overall, I think this is a pretty good little price for a starter kit. Um, yeah. I'm happy I bought these. I am happy that I did buy these. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.